Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another System Designing Go video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you how to add validations to protocol buffers. For adding validations to protocol buffers, we are going to be using a new plugin called Proto Validate. In this case, we're going to be adding the validations directly to the protocol buffer itself. We're not going to be adding validations to the generated code. What we're trying to do is actually generate the validations through the plugin itself. This plugin is part of the buff ecosystem that I showed you in the beginning of the series, so you can easily generate code using this validator and this plugin. This new generator uses Google's common expression language or cell to define rules associated to each field in the protocol buffer. It could be overwhelming in the beginning, but I assure you it's really powerful. It's similar to what we do with other packages in Go when you use the struct tags and you add the validations directly. I will show you how that works. As usual, the link to the code and the example that I'm going to be showing you is in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. So let's get started. What I want to be doing first is update buff.yaml, which is the configuration for buff itself. So if I open buff.yaml and I add a new dependency called buff build, buff build proto validate. What this is going to be doing is adding the dependency that we need and therefore it could be used when we are generating code. Next, we need to run buff mod update. This will create a new log file, which is right here. We didn't have this one before. What this includes, it's sort of like a gossam equivalent that includes the dependencies that we are using for generating code. In this case, the new generator. Next, we need to go and modify the configuration that we use for buff gen. In this case, under buff.gen.yaml. What we have to do exactly is add this new plugin and specifically make a few changes that are related to the configuration for Go. For doing that, we go under the manage section. We add another section called Go package prefix. We add a default and accept buff build, buff build proto validate. What this indicates is that now, because we are going to be importing these files, we need to explicitly exclude them in the generated code. This is what this instruction is doing. We're going to be making another changes in the previous configuration that we had in the protocol buffer. So let me show you. For this, we need to go to our protocol buffers under user v1 user proto. We're going to be removing the option of go package. We don't need that anymore because it's going to be generated automatically anyway. But what we need to do is add this import buff validate validate dot proto. Then after doing that, we can actually use Google's cell to define the rules that we are going to be using specifically to three fields, full name, birth year, and salary. Let me show you. This is where Google cells documentation comes into place because that is literally what we have to use to specify the rules in our field. So for example, for the full name, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to indicate that the minimum length is going to be one character. With this instruction, I indicate to Google cell that now you need to validate this field to be at least one character. So when we run the validate method in this protocol buffer type, it will fail if the string for the full name is empty. Let's take a look at birth year. For this one, I want to be at least greater than 1900. For that, we do something similar. We add buff validate field. And in this case, we use the int 64 greater than and we decade the 1900. Next, I want to add the validation to the salary field. For this case, I want to indicate that it has to be greater than zero or not empty. Similarly, we go and add the validation. We use a uint32 and we indicate it has to be greater than zero. So with this new configuration, what the proto validate generator is going to do is going to generate rules that are going to be enforcing the rules that we define in here. Let me show you. Next, what we have to do is to generate the code. To do that, we call it buff generate. This is going to generate the new code that is coming from the protocol buffer with the new validation rules. In order to use this as an example, we need to implement and add a new package. Because I'm going to be using Go for this example, the package is called both build proto validate Go. You go get it, it will update your Go mod and your Go sum, and then we can create a new example to call out the validation itself. Next, in order to use the package that we just got, we can create a new folder called examples validate under that examples validate we're going to be creating a new file to represent the validation a new main.go file 
This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to define a package main. We're going to be define the function main. And more importantly, we're going to be defining a user, which is coming from a user PB generated protocol buffer. The user PB will be the package that we're generating that we are defining in our protocol buffers. Then we can have a validation. So for that, we have a proto validate, which is the module that we just got a while ago. So proto validate will be used to validate the protocol buffer type in this case will be user so we do a v error proto validate which in this case this initializes the validation the proto validate module itself if there is an error we're going to do a typical you know log fatal n used to exit error proto validate and next we can actually start using the validation that we define in the protocol buffer so v validate the users that we define above and there is an error we are going to print out there was an error and the error itself otherwise we just going to say everything okay if we run this it will fail under this section because we're missing some required values let me show you you'll notice that now we have the two validations that we had before the one for the full name and the one for the birth year and you will maybe you, you probably are thinking where is the one for the salary well that one is because it's an optional argument so that's kind of ignored because optional is not required therefore it doesn't matter but if we go back and change it, and let me go and change it so you can see how it actually works. I want to say that the minimum value will be one if I go and generate. So what we do is salary and we put zero. We add the full name. We are the birth year. We run this again. You will notice that now it's failing because it has to be greater than one, which is the rule that we added before. Let's go back and change it so we'll see that now and everything is okay. And that's it. This is how you add validation rules to protocol buffers. I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Until then, keep it up and stay safe. See you.